Once you can think like the test taker or like the test makers, right? Or in that case, like the researchers, that is when you can game the MCAT. Nicole, welcome back to the MCAT podcast. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, as always. I'm excited to chat with you to continue the series, Think Like a Pro. Uh, we we started the series with Hunter. You get to fill those small shoes and <laughs> and and finish the series. We have Psych Soch that we want to cover in terms of how do we think like a pro for Psych Soch. And then... I really want to do, I think, uh, one of the most important parts of the MCAT that we talk about a bunch here on this podcast. I don't think enough people really talk about it, and that's reviewing a full length like a pro in our mm. next episode. How's that sound? Yeah, sounds good. Really, really important topics here. Yes, yes, they are. So when when you hear me say, how should a psych soch person Think like a pro MCAT test taker. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Yeah. So, I mean, so the first thing is practice. Um, so this is true for all of the MCAT um, sections. I'm sure Hunter covered some of this. So we'll talk about things that are specific to psych, soch in a second. But I really want to shout out that doing practice questions and then doing meaningful review, like we're going to talk about next episode, how you can approach that is the most important way um, and the best way to improve your score in any MCAT section. Now, psych, soch is a little bit different um, than some of our other science sections. Right? It's, of course, cars, critical reading and analysis skills is its own beast. Um, but psych soch, I think, is known among students, one for being a little bit different. And for some people, um, feeling a little bit more approachable than, for example, um, physics questions do. Dr. Gray, is this something you've heard um, from students you've talked to who are studying for the MCAT in terms of um, some people have this kind of idea that psych soch is like the easy section? <laughs> It's it's the easy section. Um, I, I don't know why people think that because there's a lot to memorize, but I, I, I think they think it's easier because, oh, if you just memorize it, then you're good. You don't have to think as much. Mm, yeah, yeah. And I'd say so it's definitely um, – it's it's true that psych soch is easier for some students, not for all students. Yeah. Um, personally, for me, psych soch was my best section. It was my highest section score. So I'm definitely a psych soch person. Um, and so Dr. Gray mentioned memorization. Um, so in compared to some of our other MCAT sciences sections, I would say that psych soch, um, you are you are going to get more out of memorization than you can for some other sections. Now, so we can't take that to mean that we don't need strategy, that we're not going to need to read critically, think critically, apply the things we know. However, there are a lot of things that you need to memorize for psych soch. There's a lot of different terms, different theories that you are just going to need to be able to say, right? Um, for example, like uh, like generation versus like sanctivity. I think I might have added or missed a syllable there. Right? But okay, which Erickson stages of development is that? You have to be able to rattle that off to me. That's yeah. true. And being able to rattle off some of those psych soch facts, if you will, is going to snag you um, a number of points on the section. So that's why psych soch has this reputation for being easier for some students, not for all students, um, is because it's a little, it, there are more questions where that fact memorization is going to get you to the answer a little faster, for example, than it might in bio biochem or in chem phys. Um, so doing flashcards for those to memorize those psych soch terms is a really, really key step. And I recommend flashcards um, for all of the science sections of the MCAT. I think flashcards, particularly space repetition software is like Anki or the Blueprint flashcard system also has space repetition built right into it. Really important, but particularly for psych soch, you got to be, you really have to know that content at full stop or there's, you cannot do well on psych soch because yeah. there are a lot of things that you have to memorize. Yeah. So there are these like hundred page psych soch, 300 page psych soch. Like 
those aren't flashcards, obviously, but mm -hmm. those are a list of all the topics. Obviously, the, the AAMC, I don't know if everyone knows, the AAMC provides a list of all of the topics they expect students to know. Mm -hmm. Is is that a good thinking like a pro, just go to a big list and go, do I know it? Do I know it? Do I know it? Do I know it? Mm -hmm. And just go down the checklist? Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends what you're doing with the checklist, right? So reading a document, right, whether it's a textbook, whether it's like the iconic 100 page, 300 page docs in the pre-med world, right? So no matter what resource you're looking at, because there's a lot of, there's there's lots of resources out there. Uh, so if you have, you know, Blueprint, we have all sorts of modules, textbooks, you can use other textbooks, those documents, other resources, there's lots of things. Yeah. Whatever resource you are using, you have to use it the right way. It's so like reading through a list, it's not going to really do much yeah. for you, right? That is about as passive as you could possibly get. When we talk about passive versus active learning, active learning in the quickest way to explain it um, is how to approach learning concepts, um, basically in the way that's going to give you the most bang for your buck, really. That's going to be the most effective for those actual memory techniques. So for example, if you are working through a psych social resource and you are making flashcards based on those that resource it and then going to do those flashcards, that's awesome. Great, do that. Um, if you want to make abbreviated study sheets, um, making big picture connections between topics, that is important as well um, because conceptual understanding is really key for the MCAT. So are you going to need to memorize things? Yes. Is the most efficient way to do that for most people going to be using space repetition flashcards? Also, yes. But if you don't have conceptual understanding of these topics as well, that is going to set you behind. So it's kind of this two-piece aspect here, um, but just with the flashcards and memorization aspect of it being a little bit heavier for psych than it is for other topics. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. When it comes to um, outside knowledge or equations, things that we think about with other sections on the MCAT, mm -hmm. how much how much does that come into play with the psych yeah. section for, for pro yeah. thinkers? Yeah, when you say outside knowledge, do you mean in terms of like bringing, bringing this fact I've memorized and then bringing it into my answer choice? Yeah, may, maybe not that less so. I don't know. We, we always talk about the car section specifically as like, <laughs> don't don't bring like if it's a, a passage about something that you yeah. studied that you've done research on, like ignore mm -hmm. everything, you know. Very true. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think um, in terms of the sciences, right, you certainly obviously need outside knowledge and that you're bringing in content, mm. right? But I think there, there's a difference between bringing in your content and bringing in your conceptions, right? Particularly with psychology and sociology, um, there's you might have certain opinions or preconceived notions that you will want to be careful um, that you aren't making an assumption accidentally based on maybe something that's just your personal experience, right? You want to make sure that you're tying in all of that to some sort of sociological construct, right? So it's about making sure that you are one, of course, like I said, bringing in this information that you're going to be working hard to build that conceptual understanding to memorize those flashcard terms, but being able to reason through passages is really important, right? Because psych social isn't different from the other science sections on the MCAT in that you have passage, a mix of passage and discrete questions, right? It's not like it suddenly just becomes the straightforward like, you know, just plug and chug, <laughs> multiple choice. It is multiple choice exam, right? But just like a basic quiz. Um, so you still have to bring in those reasoning skills. You have to bring in those highlighting skills into your passages, um, just like you would in every other section. So it's about thinking like a psych -soc pro, somebody who scores really well on psych -soc, requires you to 100% have an ironclad understanding, like I said, of all of those terms that you're going to need to know. And then it's being able to use the skills that you're going to also work to build in other sections to apply that to getting correct answers. Yeah. I think one mm -hmm. thing that we haven't talked about yet in this Think Like mm -hmm. a Pro series um, mm -hmm. with with Hunter was the fact that, and I, I know this from breaking down the diagnostic with, <laughs> with you all, with breaking mm -hmm. down the first full length with you all. Mm -hmm. A lot of the questions that I would get right going through those those breakdowns, 
I would get right without really knowing the answer. I would just be able to kind of deduce the answer from context clues and reading and and, and, and just using some thought process, some analysis. Talk mm-hmm. about the ability to do that in psychosocial versus other sections. Because to me, psychosocial is scary because it is just like, do you know Erickson? Do you know this? Do you know these four laws or theories, whatever? Can you still get good answers by by breaking down questions and going, oh, I know, I know what they're trying to get here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you can certainly get lots of questions right on psych social, right? Even if you don't know a term, right? Mm -hmm. Um, It's because just like once again, like every other MCAT section, you have information that's going to be in passages. You are going to have graphs and figures and tables to interpret, right? You're going to be presented with information. So it's truly said that a lot of time on psych social, right? You might have a passage and then have those questions, what we refer to as like a pseudo discrete. So it's attached to a passage passage, but the passage information isn't really that essential for answering the question. So there are those pseudo discrete questions, but there's also going to be lots of questions that just require passage information. So that's not to say that you can skip, you know, this flashcard memorization and, you know, like that you can just get everything from the passage, but you are, there is going to be a lot of valuable information there that you can rely on and you can pull information out of. Like I said, so it's not that we we just, oh, just flashcards. Um, you still have to have that passage comprehension in order to be able to get a top score in psych Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anything else that we haven't talked about to, to do psych yeah. like a pro, think like a pro? Yeah. I mean, I think the one other big thing in terms of categories of the kinds of topics that are on psych social is experimental design. Um, so experimental design is a component of psych social. And so things like what is an observational study? What is a case control study? Um, you know, what is a cohort? What does double blinded mean? Um, what is the difference between precision and accuracy? Um, so being able to understand those psych social terms is really important um, because it's not you're not only going to directly have questions about some of those terms, for example, that I just listed on your exam, um, but it's about understanding research and understanding how research is approached and the different ways um, you can design a study or design an experiment, right? Or even what does it mean to have an experiment? Right. Versus like, you know, study as a more general term. So things like that are going to be really essential on psych social. Even if you're not answering a question on it, having that understanding of structure in design in experiments um, is going to help you answer other questions. Right. Because it's all about building an understanding of what the passage is talking about. Right. You want to get inside the author's mind, right? The people who made that research, right? Why did they choose that experiment? If you start to get to the level where you can answer those sort of questions, um, you are really going to start pushing, right? Pushing the level, you're the level of your performance. Because once you can think like the test taker or like the test makers, right? Or in that case, like the researchers, um, that is when you can game the MCAT, basically. You try to, you try to, we talk about, the, I talk about this in my class sometime, trying to just gamify mm-hmm. the MCAT, right? So anytime, you know, you feel like you can uh, like pull one over or like, ah, oh, I saw what they were trying to do there, right? You yeah. want to get to that point where you can go, ah, I see you. I see you trying to tempt me with that answer, but you know it's not correct and you know you're not going to pick it. So very important directly on psych Soch, but also an important skill that you're going to, that you kind of unexpectedly build through that practice that you can use in other sections as well. So experimental design is a huge, um, big picture piece that, yes, once again, requires some of that memorization, but it's the understanding behind it that's really going to propel you forward. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I've told you this story mm-hmm. before. I've, I've talked about it before of a student I worked with a couple years ago who... Uh, ESL student, immigrant to this country, really struggled with the MCAT to begin with, sco- mm-hmm. scoring low 500s. And he he went away for a little bit and <laughs> came back. He's like, okay, Dr. Mm-hmm. I got I got a 520. I'm like, what happened? Like, how did you do that? He goes, I just mm-hmm. figured out what the test writers like were looking for. 
Like he just figured exactly. it out. It's like Neo in the Matrix. Like, oh, I I know kung fu, right? He just he just figured out the 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 process at which they're presenting information and and what they're trying to get out of you. And he's like, yeah. once I figured that out, I I I could get the answers. No, it's uh it's so true. I actually know one of our Blueprint NCAT um instructors who I was talking with um one time we were talking with some students and they explained how they actually once tried a whole set of cars passages without reading the passage or reading the questions they only or they only read I'm oh, sorry they read the questions and the answer choice yeah. not the passage I think they read the questions um and they were able to get I believe like 75 percent of the questions correct yeah um which you might think is crazy like how did they do that without actually knowing anything about the passage um and the answer is because the mcat is all trends right the great the you know we can say as many things as we want about standardized tests but one of the cool things about them is that they're standardized mm -hmm. there is a very actually narrow range of ways the AMC is allowed to ask you questions, right? Particularly, even like I said, this comes up particularly on cards, but in all of the sections, right? And so if you know exactly how they ask this question, well, they also are going to use the same kinds of wrong answers to try to trick you because it's standardized. They can't just make stuff up. They can't just like throw you a question out of left field. They have to stay within the confines of the exam. So if you learn what bad answer choices look like you if you learn what are the traps they try to set like i said then you make it into a game right mm. you pretend that you are designing the test right how would you have tried to trick someone into getting this question wrong right so it's all yeah it's all about getting in the minds of the people who are making the test because if you just learn these archetypes really really well um you could get to the point where you yourself are an MCAT instructor and can get a really good score without even reading a past test and obviously that is a very extreme example somebody who's been in the game a long time um but it's something that you can do as a student so really try to adopt that attitude and psych so Shannon all your sections